I think um, infertility today, as WHO has said, it's a disease. It needs to be addressed. And uh, as, as a president of Foxy, I have decided this year to make people aware of what is infertility and what are the different treatments available to it. Also, this is a one-pronged attack. The second prong is directed towards the government so that we can have the regulations set up. I think it's very important for our country to have regulations. Regulations are present all over the world in the field of IVF. And especially in our country, we have a bill which has been there with the government. And I think a lot of good things are there in that bill. A few of the things are you know, not uh, really very practical. And this is what we're having a dialogue with the government where we can request them to alter the bill and actually bring about this bill, turn it into an act so that it becomes, uh, you know, uh, acceptable and it becomes, it gets implemented throughout the country. I believe that inequities are bad for humanity. And in IVF, it becomes a rich man's uh, treatment. And I would really like to make it equal, bring it to the ground level so that every couple in our country can access it. And there are many ways of doing it. One is each gynecologist's individual social responsibility. That is one way to do it. Second is the government is coming up with the Ayushman Bharat scheme. They can actually include this in that. And the third is the insurance companies. I feel that the insurance companies need to step forward and need to uh, address this problem which exists in healthcare and uh, make funds available for people who need IVF. You know, in Ayushman Bharat, see, I'll tell you what, what are the costs in IVF? The costs are costs of the disposable and the costs of the drugs. If the government can give these things at a subsidized cost, I think IVF will become very easily accessible to people. The technology is there. India has the you know, uh, some of the best technologies are available in India. And with the help and the, you know, the whole backing of that big financial institute of our government, we can definitely make it available. So the disposables and the drugs need to be looked at. They may be indigenously uh, manufactured in India so that we can control the costs. I think if you look at India, uh, the doctors of India are famous world over as being skilled and excellent clinicians. So what we need to do is we need to build up on this. Today, if you see, like, you know, there were, there's a simple example, let me give you. There's a simple technology called Poloscope, which there were only 100 machines in Japan, and we bought the first machine to India. Even before it reaches the world, it reaches India. So that is the reach of technology in our country. And believe me, there are a lot of technologies which are available and which put us on par with the other countries. And uh, this is the whole thing. I think technology has equalized, uh, you know, everybody. With the technology, we can give equally good results. So utilization of the technology and dissemination of that technology to the needy is very, very important. And it will definitely put India on the top. Believe me, there are a lot of centers and a lot of peop good people are doing fantastic work. And you know something? I mean, initially, people used to come to India because of the low cost. But today, they are coming because an equally good you know, you have the technology at its peak and plus an affordable cost. So I think we are looking at a reverse medical tourism where people will come to India, not only for its affordability, but also because of the superlative treatment that we actually offer them. The challenges that we actually look at is uh, scaling up the, the work. And uh, scaling up work requires standardization, regulations, and I think uh, a little bit of um, financial input also, investment. So these three things need to work together to be able to do it. Right now, because the regulation is so, um, you know, we don't know what is coming. And uh, this may be stopped, that may be stopped. Like in uh, 2015, the foreigners were stopped from be, uh, doing surrogacy in India. So right now, even the surrogacy bill which was passed actually keep surrogacy at an altruistic level and a near relative. So they've made it like an organ donation bill, which exists in our country. But all these uncertainties that are there is the hurdle, I feel. And uh, once these are overcome, the country comes to a kind of a 
you know, stabilized form where IVF is concerned, we will definitely be able to scale up and, uh, you know, have even foreigners come down to India for treatment uh, using their own gametes and their own sperms because the technology is on par. I think women empowerment is very, very close to my heart. And uh, being in IVF, I've realized that giving a child to a couple actually empowers that woman. And uh, another technology which has really uh, become a very, uh, you know, it's been a game changer for women and that is egg freezing and uh, initially this egg freezing when it was started it was for cancer patients because today cancer is treatable there is life after cancer which is what the people realize and there are lots of patients who come to me now and they've not frozen the eggs so freezing of eggs was offered to cancer patients because they will uh, you know they will um, recover after cancer get married and want to have babies and then slowly from the cancer therapy, fertility preservation in cancer, it has moved to other applications. Like, you know, some people have endometriosis. I've had a uh, young girl who came to me at the tender age of 15 who had endometrioma. And then again, we had to operate on her again when she was 18. And she has frozen her eggs, but her egg reserve is low. Then there are diseases like SLE, etc., where we give really toxic drugs so that the uh, disease is in control. But that can damage the ovary so these are the patients who go and also today women are they want to study they want to you know have their careers they don't want a break I mean they have ambitions so in this way to stop that biological clock from ticking egg freezing is an option it empowers the girl to actually make her choices and she doesn't have to worry you know at the back of her mind oh my god my biological clock is ticking I think that is really something this technology has offered women all over the world uh, a freedom a freedom to do what they want